Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and watched all the past EMS videos, I definitely encourage you to hit that subscribe button and also while you're there hit that notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. Today's Tacky Tuesday is going to be all about enteroseptal MIs. So last week we talked about anterior myocardial infarction, specifically acute isolated anterior. And I just want to make it clear that I do know this definition is pretty much exactly the same as last week's definition. The only difference is that obviously it includes a different part of the heart and also these are way more common than isolated anteriors. An anterior or an anteroseptal myocardial infarction is a type of heart attack that typically indicates an occlusion of the left anterior descending artery, or the LAD. This directly affects the blood flow and oxygen delivery to the anterior portion of the heart. And the leads that you're going to look in for ST elevation include V1, V2, V3, and V4. I did not list any ST depression or reciprocal depression leads to look in, and that's mainly because on an anteroseptal there usually isn't. Now every once in a while you will get an anterior MI that involves the high lateral leads, which are leads 1 in AVL. So you'll see reciprocal depression in the inferior leads. Some causes of enteroseptal MIs include advanced age, smoking, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, arterial plaque buildup, stimulants, drugs, an inactive lifestyle, stress, and of course the family history of heart problems. Some signs and symptoms that you may see with somebody experiencing this is chest, abdominal, neck, back pain, even jaw pain, shortness of breath, chest fullness, pale and clammy skin, dizziness or syncope, fatigue, hypertension, tachycardia, and sometimes pulmonary edema. Possible EMS treatments, of course, always follow your local protocol and stay within your scope of practice, but they can include a 12 lead, gathering vitals, an IV or a blood drive, giving O2 if needed, aspirin, nitro, fentanyl, as an analgesic and fluid if needed. This is not always a treatment during the course of an MI, but you can administer fluid. Um, and as always, definitely treat your patient's complaint. You've got a patient there, ask them what they're feeling, ask them what they're experiencing, and treat according to what they're complaining about. And that's about all I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye!